Hey guys, welcome to this Godot beginner tutorial series where we're going to be building an endless runner game in Godot Engine. So in this uh, tutorial we're going to start expanding on our scenes over here and we're going to incorporate a foreground and a background as well and then we're going to bring in the sc scrolling background scene as our decoupled scene which will give these uh, foregrounds and backgrounds a behavior. So guys, before we jump into that, uh, please do subscribe to this channel now and hit that notification bell to not miss any of these tutorials in future. So let's uh, have a look at what we're going to do. So the first thing we want to do is create a new scene and I'm going to use a 2D scene for now and rename that to background and I'm going to save that off. And uh, what we want to do is just uh, make sure we've got a folder for this so in our scenes we're going to just create a folder called fgbg so foregrounds and backgrounds and then we'll just name this background.tscn and save that off and then we'll create a foreground so just another scene 2d scene rename that to foreground save that off and now let's work on the actual scrolling background function. So what we'll do is we'll use um, shaders in Godot to uh, just create the scrolling effect. So there's many ways of doing this. You could um, make changes to how you import your sprites and make them tileable and scrollable. But uh, what we'll do is we'll use shaders, one for you to learn how to use shaders and what they are. And then second for us to be able to utilize the GPU to do the scrolling instead of the CPU. So what we'll do now uh, to create the shader and what I'll do is I'll just give a very quick and brief explanation to what shaders are. So shaders are bits of uh, code which execute either on uh, vertices within your scene or on pixels and individual pixels within your scene. And uh, generally what happens is it gets processed on the GPU of your PC or mobile device. And why this is beneficial is because GPUs are extremely efficient at multi-threading and processing things in threads. Uh, due to them having just so many cores to, to work with as opposed to regular CPUs, so I prefer to use the GPU for scrolling because it's going to be a, an effect which is just happening all the time within our scene and I don't want to put all that load onto the CPU. So there is maybe arguments about uh, will this create more battery heat on mobile devices but I haven't found this to be the case. Maybe if you uh, do know uh, if this is the issue or it can create an issue please do comment below in the comment box. And then uh, I will uh, just reply on that and we can have that uh, discussion and we can then incorporate it into some of the future videos as well. So let's uh, just get started with this. So the first thing we want to do is our scrolling background. Uh, we're not going to be using an O2D. We're going to change the type to a, <coughs> a texture rect. And then this texture rect will contain a texture, but we're not going to assign it here. We'll assign it when we actually bring this into the background and foreground. So for now, we're going to leave this and we're going to change it to tile mode because we'll be using tile mode regardless for all scrolling backgrounds going forward. And then what we want to do is we want to go over to material. We want to create a new shader material. And I click on this little sphere here and then on the shader we want to create a new shader so you could also use the visual shader if you like but i'm going to just use the regular shader because we're going to write some code over here so i'll explain this more or less how this is going to work and then we can take a look at uh, how we can actually start reusing this very same functionality for all our backgrounds so first of all, what we're going to do is we need to define a shader type. So the shader type for 2D games are always canvas item in Godot. 
And then what we'll do is we'll create a uniform variable and it will be a float and the scroll speed will be what we are declaring. So just to explain this, uh, this uniform will basically allow us to set the value here in our inspector. And then we can manipulate it either via script or directly from the inspector over here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a simplified version of this where we don't actually even need this script. So I'm going to remove it. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and delete the scrolling background script over here as well. So we're not going to be needing it right now. So let's uh, keep things clean and clear. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do here is we need to use the fragment shader. So the fragment shader executes on every pixel in our scene or within this scrolling background node. And then it will do some modifications to it. It can move uh, the UVs around, etc. So the UVs are basically a mapping of where certain pixels from our textures are sitting on our components. So to simply scroll a background, we will use the UVs and then just move them on the X axis. So to do that, we need to sample the UV first. So I will just click a U variable and we'll sample UV like this. Then we'll take the U.X and we'll add the scroll speed and we'll multiply that by time to allow it to increment over time. And then we'll take a sample of the color from the texture. So this is a VEC4 and we'll call it color or col. And then we'll take the texture and we'll sample it from texture using the UV coordinate. And then we'll simply just assign this back to the color. And that is our shader. So very simply what it's going to do, it's going to move the UVs on the X axis at a certain scroll speed over time. And then we'll take a sample of that change and reset the fragment shader with that color mapping. So then it will appear that our backgrounds are scrolling. So what we're going to do here is we'll just start off with a basic parameter. So if you go under shader param over here, I'm going to set a default of 0 0.2 and I'm going to save this off. So now what we want to do uh, for our, let's say our foreground where we actually going to be scrolling our floor is we are going to just go ahead and drag in one of these scrolling background uh, scenes. So I'm going to show you another issue as well with this and uh, I'll also show you how to fix it. So what we'll do is um, we'll go into the effectors, backgrounds, and then scrolling background. We'll bring that into our scene. So now what you'll see is uh, just this area over here. And uh, we've got this texture slot now, which we can use. So what we'll do is we'll uh, bring our backgrounds in. So I'm going to bring in this ground and I'm going to drag it in over there. And you'll see now it's immediately scrolling already. <clears throat> so that's fine and well and everything and let's save that and what you'll see here is that under material and uh, the shader we've got the scroll speed of 0 0.2 but now let's go to our background and do the very same thing and let's uh, bring in the effector and put it in there and then bring in this background and you'll see that it's scrolling as well. But let's uh, go now and modify the scroll speed to let's say one. So you'll see it's scrolling quite quickly now. And now it's updated this as well. So that's an issue. It's not instancing this scrolling background for both. It's basically or, or separately, it's sharing the scrolling background for both of these. So how we can fix this is we go into scrolling background over here and then we need to go into resource and we need to check this local to scene. 
is on. So what it will do is it will basically allow us to instance the scrolling background separately for each of these scenes once we use it and that will fix the speed issue. So if we then set this uh, background to move at let's say zero because we want it to be stationary and we want this foreground to be at 0 0.2 like we had it and we can just simply make it 0 0.2 and you see it scrolls and this background remains static so let's now just resize this background to make it fit so to do that we will just uh, make sure this fits so we're going to use the scale tool here and I think I'll hold shift or control or is it alt shift shift is what we want and uh, just bring that in like so and get it to about there I think and what I want to do is just move this up to make a bit more sense like that and then for our foreground we'll do something similar just to get it to be the right size so you see this is the size of our scene so let's just bring that down as well so we'll use this scale and bring it down to about there to make it fit so now what we can do is we can now sort of build out a bit of the game over here so simply put what we'll do is we'll use those scenes we just created so we're going to fgbg bring in our background bring in our foreground and then we can position our foreground to where we want it so like so about and let's hit play to see what that looks like so we're going to select our main scene over here and as you see we've got a scrolling background with this background in our scene so that's how we can actually go ahead and reuse this scrolling background so let's say you wanted to make a parallax effect you could bring in two more backgrounds on top of this and have them all scroll at different speeds and then this will just look a lot more alive and it will be very simple all you need to do is just create a new scene and drag in the scrolling background so that's what we talk about when we talk about reuse and uh, you know a single responsibility so this uh, scrolling background has a single responsibility to just scroll backgrounds for us so guys basically that's the end of this tutorial for now and we'll start bringing in more effects etc in the next tutorial but uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, if you did like this video please do like it below and you know uh, just uh, post some comments and questions uh, if you have any and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet also subscribe so that you can get uh, to see all these videos and uh, I'll thanks a lot again for watching and I'll see you in the next one cheers